Hey guys, welcome back to MG Rebuild. It's now 2021. Uh, it's about two and a half years since I've started this project, so it's time for a catch up. I did say in the last video I was going to have them have these episodes a little bit closer together, and I, I have I failed already. It's been six weeks since the last one, and I do apologise, but it's been Christmas time. Um, I've had uh, eight family birthdays, either a month either side of Christmas, so it's a very, very busy time for our family. So I haven't had much time to, to do videos, uh, let alone spend any time doing any work on the car. But I'll give you a quick run through and show you what, you ha what I have been doing over the last couple of weeks anyway. Okay, um, most of you would uh, remember this little incident I had when I was fitting the, uh, the, the body tub to the car. Well, although it wasn't damaged all that badly, it was still still annoying me that they actually um, that it did happen. I know that you're not going to see um, see the scuff marks or the there was a slight crack mark through the bottom there as well. I know you're not going to see that. It's all covered by the fuel tank, but it's it was really bugging me. Um, I wouldn't be comfortable leaving it the way it was. Um, I mean, one day, this, you know, I might end up selling this car and I wouldn't be comfortable telling, look, oh yes, everything's perfect except there's got a big scar on the, on the back here. So, so I decided to bugger it. The, the weather's turning better now, so it'd be good for painting. So I decided to, to rub it back and um, clean it up. There's also a bit of a paint chip down here as well, so I thought I might as well do that. And... <coughs> There was another paint chip brand here. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, and where the hinge went as well. There's a bit of a chip there as well. <sighs> I could have left it. It would have been hidden by the hinge. But I, once again, wasn't happy. I wasn't um, comfortable leaving it as it was. So, like I said, the paint... Um, sorry, the, the weather is improving now, finally. It's, we're a month into summer already and we've had the worst, the wettest, coldest, windiest summer so far. Um, but I've got a couple of weeks off um, in a couple of weeks time. So I'm hoping to be able to have the car ready so I can actually just finish painting off what I needed to paint. Now, I've also in the process of buying a, a brand new tourner cover off a gentleman. Um, however, the actual... Um, holes for the lift the dot pegs weren't going to line up um, so and I, and I look yes I can I do, do need to drill new holes and that sort of thing I just didn't want to leave blank holes in the cow so I've decided I'm going to uh, to patch those up and then repaint this as well um, just I don't know perhaps I'm too much of a perfectionist um, I mean I say that but look man the work I do is not perfect, but yeah, not by a long shot. So, but I just want to make it as good as I can do. Anyway, um, as you can see, the transmission tunnel is now in. The handbrake is assembled and hooked up. Um, it still needs adjusting it yet because it's still a bit loose. Everything's rather dusty at the moment because I've been doing doing a bit of um, sanding of body filler and that. Uh, so yeah, it does get a bit dusty. Uh, the <clears throat> excuse me, the uh, curtain box, side curtain box, has been all cleaned up um, and painted. It's look, it's not the prettiest box. It is a bit rough, especially down the bottom end. But it's <laughs> it's one of these things that's going to get damaged later on anyway. Um, I'm hoping it doesn't, but. If, it's, if anything's going to get damaged in the car, underneath the car, it's a fair chance it's going to be that. It's just one of those things that just hangs down a little bit lower and you're going to get a rock or something to damage it. So that's just the way it is. The, the, the floorboards, I've been having a little bit of a play with them. I've still got a long way to go yet. Um, I've started to mount them down with the screws there. Uh, you can see the back end there. Um, Look, 
even though it's actually off the the template I had there's still a bit of a gap there so I'm not 100% sure what I should do there should I cut out a piece of timber and fit in there um, and do I fit it all the way to the back and just um, put an, a bit of an angle on it or, or, or what do I put a bit of rubber under it and protect it that way so um, thoughts and ideas on that one would be fantastic uh, the speedo cable is in, but I'm going to take it back out again. Um, I'm having a bit of trouble working out how to, to route this. Sorry, I'm just going to jump in the car. <clears throat> Hopefully you can see. Because um, at the moment, it's just laying down there at the moment, it's quite a, it's quite a sharp angle. I've actually heard or seen a... Um, a picture sorry I know it's dark down here there's a hole just above the master cylinder and I've seen where people actually put put it through there and run it through the actual um, chassis channel um, I'm not 100% sure where it comes out yet I haven't actually looked into that um, so that's something else um, I would love some bit of feedback on as well so um, if you know a bit about that please let me know that'd be fantastic <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, in the last video, we had the engine running. It was running very rough. It's um, it is running better now. It's not. It doesn't have that terrible miss in it. It still doesn't have an exhaust, so I can't really run it for very long. Um, I mean, I do live in a um, residential area, so um, I've got neighbours right next door. I don't want to. I don't want to piss them off. So um, I do have an, uh, a stainless steel exhaust on its way. It should be here in the next few days, hopefully. So with a bit of luck, the next video will actually be um, the fitting of the exhaust. Um, once, the, <clears throat> once the exhaust and the, um, the, the bracket kit arrives as well. Um, and I've still got to work out some um, pancake filters for these little babies. Because uh, at the moment, you can see there's no space to block in there. Um, and that was due to the actual radiator stay getting in the way. Um, look, I would like to put it in, put those spaces, spacer blocks in. So I'll have a bit more of a play with that, see if I can get that to work still for me. Uh, let's see, what else have I done? Um, yes, the radiator drain tap. And I'll just go around the other side of the car. So that little baby down there, um, that was leaking. Now, funnily enough, it's got the slightest of slight weeps. I pulled it out and <clears throat> um, and honed it um, to try and make it uh, a better seal because it's it's basically um, like a a cone fitting inside another cone. Um, and, and there was actually a spring at the bottom of it holding them together. The spring was a little bit weak, so I put a stronger spring in there. Has improved it, but it hasn't, still hasn't stopped that leak completely. So, um, it's one of those things that it is such a minor leak. I'm not going to worry about it. I will, once I've got the exhaust on there, I will then <clears throat> flush the radiator out and then put in the, uh, the coolant. So, um, that's one job that'll be finished. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I've got a bit of a, th <clears throat> a bit of a frog in the throat. Um, let's move that out of the way. Now, as you can see in the battery compartment, I've got the, uh, the taco cable going in. I've got to do the grommet yet. Um, normally the, the top one would be for the oil line, oil, uh, oil pressure gauge line. In my case, I've actually have put in, um, the battery isolation switch so actually the actual cable for that goes through there instead and I'm going to most likely drill another hole to the side so it'd be a bit of an L shape there and that will actually be for the oil pressure gauge line instead so um, it's not, I know it's not original and especially according, according to the little diagram here it's certainly not um, but that's just how it is. Actually, it's something I've been trying to work out. 
It's on this diagram. It's these two holes here that lead into the actual toolbox. I've got them there, but I haven't been able to work out what they're there for. Um, another question, if you guys know what they are, that'd be fantastic. So um, it just doesn't make sense to why they would actually go into the toolbox. Um, just no sense at all, especially when there's white, the white felt in there, so crazy. Um, now the starter switch, you may have noticed on the last video when I was starting the engine, the actual starter switch, even though it's brand new, was staying on sometimes. Um, apparently, it can happen. It's very rare for it to happen. Um, but this switch apparently ended up being faulty. So I contacted Martin from Abington Spares, and he just sent me a new one. Um, no questions asked. So that is really good service there. I do appreciate that, Martin. You've done a great job. Um, and that's basically all... For now um so i've got some got some more ply there and over there so um i was going to uh do the actual uh interior so the curtain side the side curtain box and start working on the seat back and the seat base as well but considering the weather's going to hopefully be good i can should really be doing the painting because the rest of the rest of the year because i do it outside in a spray booth is not really um, great spraying weather um, for me to do that. So uh, the, the interior will be put off for a little while until I get the actual body repainted. Um, and a few other little things there, like the, like the fuel tank. Um, so actually with the fuel tank, so I've got a bit of crap on it at the moment. Um, this was rusty inside. Look, they all are. I'll be surprised if you can find one that has doesn't have rust on the inside of it. It also had, so I'm just gonna try and move my camera. Um, they actually had a couple of little holes around the actual base of the, uh, the fuel outlet. Um, and so I'll just put a, I mean, yes, ideally weld it. Um, I'm not a welder, I don't have a welder. And the, the risk of explosion was just too great. I just decided to do what they call cold weld and use some JB Weld around around that. That fixed up the hole perfectly. It has got no leak issues whatsoever around that. Um, I also put some hydrochloric acid through the actual tank itself, and I left that in overnight, and there was a, a hole in behind this bracket somewhere. Um, now, naturally, you'd have to rip that bracket off, cut it open, and find out where it all is. So instead of doing that, I actually have run, um, I put a tank liner kit through it. It's a, uh, a ceramic one. A lot of people don't like using these. Um, it's, and I can understand because they do deteriorate. Some of them will deteriorate when you use ethanol fuel. Um, I don't know, look, you can buy ethanol fuel down here in Australia. I don't know if our standard fuel has much ethanol, if, if any at all, but this actual tank liner kit um, is safe for ethanol fuel, so it won't cause any issues. So if I do use ethanol, it won't matter. Um, oh, that's one other thing as well. I've had the, uh, the dash center chromed up and I've now painted that. Um, I'm pretty happy with that. I've actually have painted it twice. Uh, the first time when I was pulling the tape off around the chrome, I did tear a bit of the paint, so I redid that. And I've also got a a bit of a, a gloss finish on that one as well, just to make it a little, hopefully a little bit more durable. Um, so with a bit of luck, that should last a little bit longer. Okay, so it's just a bit of a quick video today. Um, once again, I am still waiting for some parts to arrive. And it is a bit of a hold up waiting for parts, especially this time of year. But look, there are other things I need to do before these parts arrive anyway. And that is obviously uh, the painting of the bodywork. I've got a Still got to do the fuel tank, uh, prep that for paint. Um, the rear splash guard, as you can tell, the rear of the Lance, it's covered in body filler. Look, I know most people will say, oh, what do you use that much body filler for? It's just ridiculous, you're wasting it. Um, look, this is, this is how I do it. Um, it does give you a straighter panel. There's less, um, less evidence uh, that shows through the paint of where the actual body filler is. 
Uh, I've got a mate who's been a, a panel beater for 15 plus years, and he said, yeah, this is, this is um, the best way to get a nice dead straight panel. Um, so look, I'm happy with that. Look, there are better ways, no doubt. I'm not a panel beater, I'm not a spray painter, but this is what has worked for me, so this is what I will continue to do. I'm, I'm, yes, I do waste a lot of material, because I usually rub off about 80 to 90% of it, if not more. Um, so a lot of that just turns into dust. But look, it gets me the results I want, the results that I'm happy with, because like I said, this is the first time I've ever painted a car, and the results, I'm, I'm absolutely over the moon with how, how well they've turned out. They're not, certainly not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. And yes, the car will need to be polished before it actually will be finished. But, oh look, um, I'm very, very happy with that, with the results. And like my wife even wants me to paint her car now. So um, I'm not sure if I've actually created a rod for myself, but um, that's just the way things are. Uh, so the, the channel, the YouTube channel, um, has been going absolutely gangbusters over the last few weeks. I'm not sure why we're getting a lot of new subscribers and I do appreciate it and thank you very much for subscribing to the channel. Only about 22% of the actual viewers are actually subscribers, which um, which is surprising really. But anyway, look, that's fine. If you do like it, please subscribe to the channel um, and don't forget to hit that notification button because um, even though my videos have been a little bit, a little bit slack lately, I... I do promise, and I will keep this promise, that they will be out more often, um, especially once that exhaust arrives and the paint, I'm um, getting ready for the paint as well, so I'll be doing some more videoing of that. So, um, also the, the merchandise shop, I've actually have closed it down, I think I've told about it, told you about this before, I've closed the merchandise shop down for a little while. Um, with this uh, pandemic, um, delivery times were just blowing out dramatically, you know, two or three months before items will be delivered and I didn't think that was fair fair for my customers um, and look I don't want people to have a, uh, a bad experience so I thought look I'd rather just put a pause to the shop and then once things have, um, have improved then I'll reopen it I do have some more designs um, running around my head at the moment so um, a couple of them are a little bit cheeky um, so hopefully we'll be in a situation soon where we can actually uh, relaunch the shop and it actually won't be a shop as such it'll be through our website um, my talented son Lachlan is actually building me a website at the moment um, he's doing an absolutely fantastic job and part of that will actually be the shop the actual merchandise shop along with um, these videos photos of the cars and a few other things there as well a few links to other websites as well so anyway, like I said, this is a bit of a short video, a bit of a catch up one. It's most likely gone longer than I was expecting, but anyway, um, I've, I'm, we're finished now. So um, don't forget to subscribe, like I said earlier, and I hope you have a great day. See you later.